For thousands of years, Iran, the land once known to the world as Persia, has stood at the crossroads of civilizations. Its mountains guarded empires, its deserts carried caravans, its cities birthed poets, philosophers, and kings. From the brilliance of Persepolis, to the verses of Hafez, to the enduring influence of Zoroastrian fire and Islamic scholarship, Iranian civilization has shaped the world for over three millennia. But today, a new kind of evidence is rewriting the story. Not inscriptions, but DNA. In the last two decades, the science of genetics has peeled back the layers of myth and tradition to reveal something astonishing. The true biological origins of the Iranian people. Until recently, identity in Iran was traced through dynasties, languages, and faith. Some proudly linked themselves to Aryan roots, others to the Persian empires and Islamic golden age. But genetics shows us something deeper. Iranians carry in their blood the legacies of Neolithic farmers, steppe nomads, Elamite kings, Indo-European migrants, Arab conquerors, Turkic horsemen, and even traders from Africa and India. Ancient DNA from 5,000-year-old skeletons in Iranian soil has revealed a shocking truth. The Iranian genome is older, more layered, and more global than anyone imagined. This is not just science. It is history written in our cells. A record of migrations, conquests, resilience, and survival. So in this journey, we'll trace the genetic story of Iranians, from the first farmers of the Zagros Mountains through the Indo-Iranian migrations, the Persian empires, the Arab and Turkic waves, and into the diverse mosaic of modern Iran. And by the end, you may see that Iran's legacy and its people are both more ancient and more interconnected with the world than history books ever told us, long before Persia, long before the word Iran even existed. The Zagros Mountains were already alive with human settlement. Around 10,000 years ago, at sites like Ganj Dare and Tepe Abdul Hussein, early Neolithic communities emerged. These were among the first in the world to domesticate goats and cultivate grains. Archaeology shows us their villages, hearths, tools, burial sites. Genetics shows us their ancestry. Modern DNA analysis reveals that these Zagros farmers were genetically distinct from the Anatolian farmers who spread agriculture into Europe. They were part of a separate branch of the Neolithic Revolution, carrying their own unique genetic signatures. And remarkably, those signatures remain in modern Iranians today, especially in the West and South. These early farmers were not Indo-European. They were not Semitic. They were the original inhabitants of the Iranian plateau, the genetic foundation upon which all later layers would be built. By 3000 BC, one of the first great civilizations of Iran had taken root, the Elamites. Centered in Susa, in the fertile plains of Khuzestan, the Elamites built city-states that rivaled Mesopotamia. They developed writing systems, rich art and architecture. But their language was a mystery. It was an isolate unrelated to Indo-European or Semitic tongues. A linguistic orphan. For centuries, historians debated their origin. Genetics provides a clue. Ancient DNA shows the Elamites were largely descended from the same Neolithic Zagros farmers, with additional admixture from the Fertile Crescent. In other words, the Elamites were the children of Iran itself, an indigenous civilization, long before Aryans or Persians. Their culture would fade after repeated defeats to Assyria and Babylon. But their bloodline lived on, absorbed into the future peoples of Iran. Then, Around 2000 to 1500 BCE, the world shifted. From the northern steppes, the vast grasslands stretching from Ukraine to Kazakhstan, came new tribes. They rode horses. They herded cattle. They were the Indo-Iranians, part of the great Yamnaya-derived migrations that had already transformed Europe. They brought with them not only a language, the ancestor of Old Persian, Avestan, and Sanskrit but also a new genetic signature, steppe ancestry. This steppe DNA blended with the older Zagros farmer ancestry, creating the hybrid that defines much of the Iranian genome today. In fact, when scientists analyzed ancient remains from Central Asia and Iran, they found this dual heritage everywhere, 50 to 60% Neolithic farmer 
20 to 30 percent steppe nomad, the rest from regional exchanges. The Indo-Iranians did not erase the old populations. They fused with them. And this fusion laid the foundation for the tribes that would one day be known as the Medes, the Persians, and the Parthians. By the 7th century BC, Iranian tribes had organized into kingdoms. The Medes established power in the northwest, but it was the Persians, under Cyrus the Great, who created the first empire that spanned continents. The Achaemenid Empire stretched from the Indus Valley to the Balkans, from Egypt to Central Asia. It was the first true superpower, and yet, even at its height, the Persians never lost their roots. DNA studies of remains from Achaemenid times show the same steppe farmer blend that defines Iranians today. The empire was a cultural melting pot. Elamites, Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, and Jews all lived under its rule. But genetically, the Persian elite were still overwhelmingly Iranian. This is one of the great paradoxes of history, an empire built on diversity but anchored in deep continuity. When Alexander the Great conquered Persia in 330 BCE, Greek culture flooded the land, new cities rose, Greek art and philosophy mixed with Persian traditions. But in genetics, the impact was surprisingly small. While Greek influence left its mark on culture, DNA studies show minimal Greek ancestry in modern Iranians. The conquerors left fewer genetic traces than their historical impact would suggest. Instead, Iran absorbed the Greeks and then reasserted itself through the Parthians and Sassanids, who revived Persian identity and power. In the 7th century CE, Arab armies stormed Persia. The Sassanid Empire fell. Zoroastrian fire temples gave way to mosques. Persian script transformed under Arabic letters. Islam became the dominant faith. But once again, the DNA tells a subtler story. Genetic studies show that while Arabian ancestry entered the Iranian gene pool, it remained a minor contribution compared to the overwhelming continuity of older Iranian lineages. Culturally, however, the impact was immense. Persian thought merged with Islamic philosophy. The Abbasid caliphs relied on Persian administrators, poets, and scientists. This was the age of Avicenna, Rumi, and Ferdowsi, an Islamic age, but deeply Persian at its core. From the 11th century onward, Iran faced new waves of conquerors, the Seljuk Turks, and later the Mongols under Genghis Khan. The Turks left their language in places like Azerbaijan. The Mongols left devastation, then dynasties. But genetically, their footprint was modest. Central Asian and Mongolic ancestry entered Iran, most strongly in the northeast. But it never replaced the dominant Iranian profile. Over time, both Turks and Mongols were absorbed into Persian culture, speaking its language, patronizing its poets, and ruling as Persians themselves. Iran's resilience lay not in rejecting invaders, but in transforming them. In the 16th century, the Safavid dynasty gave Iran its modern shape. By adopting Shia Islam as the state religion, they created a distinct identity, separating Iran from its Sunni neighbors. But once again, the genes remained much the same. Modern Iranian DNA is strikingly similar to that of ancient Persians, still anchored in that old Neolithic steppe fusion. What changed most was not biology, but belief, not blood, but borders. Today, Iran is seen as Persian at its core. But beneath that lies extraordinary diversity. Kurds in the West retain strong continuity with ancient Zagros populations. Lures show long-term isolation with unique genetic markers. Azeris blend deep Iranian roots with Turkic ancestry. Baluchis share affinities with South Asians, reflecting centuries of contact. Coastal groups of the Persian Gulf carry traces of African ancestry, from trade and migration. This diversity is not contradiction, it is the essence of Iran. A genetic crossroads, mirroring its history as a cultural one. So what does genetics ultimately tell us? It tells us that Iranians today are not defined by a single tribe, dynasty, or conquest. They are the product of layer upon layer of history. Neolithic farmers of the Zagros, steppe nomads of the Indo-Iranian migrations, indigenous Elamites, Persians, Medes, and Parthians, Arabs, Turks, 
and Mongols, traders from India, Africa, and the Caucasus. And yet, through it all, a common thread endures, a deep genetic continuity that links modern Iranians to the earliest farmers of their land. Identity is often told as a story of purity, of unbroken lineage, of singular origin. But Iran's genetic story proves the opposite. It shows us that identity is a tapestry woven from many threads, resilient because of its complexity. To be Iranian is not to descend from one people, but from many. It is to inherit 10,000 years of resilience, creativity, and transformation. The ruins of Persepolis stand as stone monuments to empire, but the double helix of DNA is a monument written in flesh and blood. And in that code, the story of Iran continues, ancient, diverse, and still unfolding. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Iran, let us know in the comments. Have you taken a DNA test and discovered some Iranian roots? Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.